hope i'm audible yes yes audible sir please good sir perfect so uh, let me all first of all wish you um, happy and prosperous new year um, it's an ambitious uh, year for all of us you now 2024 is going to bring in lot of changes and what a right topic to discuss on you know, online coaching and online uh, a way of attending uh, uh, attracting students uh, to campus um, so last time also i had uh, the same set of learned audience um, who are from various uh, institutes and uh, are eminent professors and uh, uh, teaching at uh, various levels uh, so uh, to talk about uh, the way in which uh, things are rapidly changing around us uh, so 2020 is a benchmark as you all know how things are uh, looking up to in the different uh, propositions. So we've been uh, looking at how we can uh, offer education to students and now online uh, medium of um, education is uh, taking uh, a center stage. Uh, most of our uh, teaching is now predominantly looking up to offering uh, courses to students. Um, the way of in which things are revolving around us, uh, the rapid changes, it is putting pressure on a lot of our faculties now uh, to implement ourselves. Uh, in this uh, medium of education, online exchange of uh, knowledge, uh, it is getting quite challenging. And uh, what we were uh, accustomed to all these years uh, is uh, the uh, physical way of uh, teaching. So it is debatable. Uh, it is not that we are promoting online teaching or anything. You know, we there is always uh, two sides for a coin in looking up to whether physical teaching or online teaching is uh, looked up to from the student's perspective. Uh, there are a lot of uh, theories, uh, now research, which has been uh, done uh, in implementing, which is the best mode of teaching now. Uh, we will we can never supplement uh, the physical teaching mode. The personal attention is different. This online medium of education is is going to stay, or uh, how are things which will be revolving? So let me start uh, the discussion, uh, sharing my knowledge with you all, uh, by one eminent uh, researcher who is actually quoted that you know down the line another five to ten years in this time frame, fifty percent of our educational institutions will go online. Uh, when he he makes this statement, uh, says that you know all these educational institutions will no no longer have multiple floors of buildings, but multiple floors of uh, labs or multiple floors of uh, recording centers where uh, we have to present ourselves uh, in uh, a huge uh, uh, medium and uh, be present online and uh, teach our students online uh, is what they're saying. But uh, there is also other side of uh, research finding, which says, you know, online medium uh, is not helping our students there. We've seen we, uh, the pandemic batch of students passing out from our institutes. We've seen their uh, application aspect. We've seen their technology aspects. You know, they are not up to the mark. Or we've just wasted time in uh, you know, starting uh, the classes with them. So there are other side of debate which is happening and saying that, you know, online education is going to stay and it is going to increase. Now there is other uh, set of experience we've had since 2020, which is not so being great. Uh, we know our students, you know, they have passed out, we know their education level. So what happened uh, in the scenario of 2020, uh, the online education uh, grew up uh, multiple times, more than uh, 10x. So we also know the disaster of Baiju's, which has hap happened. A uh, lot of investment, venture capitalists have actually looked up to investing on tech -ed companies, the boom of uh, these online medium of uh, MOOC codes, which have been taken the center stage. So industry revolution happened. Now at ground, what we are facing, what is a turbulent situation with faculties? When we come to uh, teaching at ground level, we taught these students for three years online, uh, not much of uh, uh, experience, not, not a good experience. Most of us have felt it. Uh, students have also said the same thing. It is not only the perspective of teachers, but uh, the perspective of the, uh, students are also like, you know, they had less success rate when it comes to online uh, classes or uh, attending. Uh, so when we when we know that there are a lot of challenges around surrounding online teaching, how can we still do justice in uh, 
sharing our knowledge, passing on the information to uh, people around us, the student uh, whom we look, look up to, is what I'm um, going to uh, present to you on certain aspects of uh, uh, data which uh, we have gathered. So as I said, it is debatable. So there is no proper way of uh, telling that, you know, whether this is the correct medium, the you know, physical teaching is where we can show, demonstrate uh, emotions to students. Online medium, we know they'll not be so uh, uh, empathetic to listen to what we are saying. But there are other ways in which technology is driving. Uh, things are revolving around us. So certain universities have now uh, transformed themselves to online uh, universities. And they've said, you know, we are offering degrees. Indian universities also have now uh, started giving online degrees. But what is the authenticity? What? How can we look up to uh, capturing uh, the knowledge uh, exchange mode in this online medium? And how things can be looked up to uh, taking uh, the classes or online classes, which Hope uh, my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, whether we like it or not, online teaching is the new normal. It is going to be there permanently, and we can't say that you know online education is a temporary, which was supplementing uh, the regular. Uh, so beyond 2020, a lot of changes, as I said, has happened in the education industry and uh, tech education is booming. And they always said, uh, we are going to implement a lot of uh, tools and uh, there's a lot of softwares which have been also been developed. And predominantly the research process with uh, online uh, importance is going. I'll just give you a few of the examples what uh, we have witnessed at our uh, university when we were uh, conducting online examinations or online teaching methods. Now with uh, the physical mode of uh, working which is slowly deteriorating and love online mode of working hybrid mode of working if you look out around the it industry now they are not completely physical they are working hybrid but they are still looking up to how uh, they can uh, uh, see the productivity of their employees similarly in education industry uh, when we look up to the recruitment scenario what uh, we are seeing day in and day out most of the companies are recruiting students through online uh, tests and online tests are uh, monitored by uh, several uh, softwares which uh, uh, tells us you know what is the area the student is lacking what is the area which the student is strong on ai is taking predominantly a uh, front street in uh, analyzing uh, whether the student has performed well what is the area of interest the student is looking up to now ai, AI is the new buzzword which is uh, uh, telling us what is that we have to deliver to the students. AI will give us an input and say that this set of students have not understood this set of topics. Now, AI is taking over a lot of our the changes in uh, all areas and predominantly even in uh, uh, the tech ed and uh, education uh, setting, you know, we will have these softwares coming in. I'll uh, show you a few demonstrations of how softwares are now uh, uh, helping uh, our teachers in um, the knowledge transfer process. Uh, so one area which has uh, hugely benefited uh, from uh, the tech education, from online mode of uh, learning is where we did not have access, uh, some of the villages which did not have access to public transport, which did not have access to proper buildings, infrastructures. So this is one area uh, where village uh, students are actually looked up to utilizing uh, the tech education industry, the online mode, uh, medium of uh, working. So many of the softwares which are now devised, the you know, MOOC contents which are being devised are actually uh, going beyond computers, uh, computers, devices, and which it can also be uh, presented in handheld devices. So village or rural set of uh, students who could not be taught well or did not have access to proper infrastructure of education are the ones who can utilize the maximum of online. So we see a lot of benefits 
in uh, presenting these students the online medium of education. But what is the infrastructure, necessary infrastructure which can be created is also been uh, presented uh, by using a uh, handheld device or by uh, presenting them with the tablets. Few of our own uh, children in India, the government is supporting them with uh, uh, the tablets, um, Akash tablet or let it be low cost or uh, handheld devices which have been distributed to these uh, ch uh, children. So how can we uh, attract them uh, towards learning, uh, towards capably uh, building their capacity is uh, one advantage which we have to look, look here. Um, and there has been a constant uh, survey which is happening. So this was one uh, author uh, who did a survey in 2020, September 16, uh, uh, who, who actually gives us some data points here. 59% uh, of the students uh, felt the online courses are not helping them. 50% uh, uh, of the students have actually felt it is better to learn on a physical mode and uh, they, they will be uh, looking up to accessing the social uh, medium of understanding better. So similarly, what has happened uh, when, when they are actually doing this uh, survey, uh, they have felt that you know when they, they work to in, uh, in a social platform, in a physical mode of uh, uh, learning, if they come across any doubt clarification, they can easily be clarified with the help of a person sitting next to them or a friend or a classmate who can actually help them in solving the question. And also the medium of understanding from the faculties who can actually help them on, on the phase or when they are in the physical presence. But this is the disadvantage which they are also looking up to while uh, the teacher is not being able to understand the emotion, understand what is lacking in the student perspective in the online medium of it. So 30% of the stu students have said, you know, they have missed uh, social interaction. So they, they are not competing enough with uh, the study aspect of it when they looked up to understanding the knowledge. 70% uh, of them have said, you know, if we are going to school with, with the new rise in, uh, uh, you know, the pandemic uh, awareness, the, when the news is which, uh, which has been spread across when day in and day out, um, when we said when we thought the pandemic is going to uh, is end and uh, we are getting back to normal, we already have some uh, guidelines which has been uh, noted down by all our uh, uh, government uh, initiatives. The, they are they already started telling you know wear mask. Uh, students are the first set of uh, citizens who are actually be, will be affected because we have diverse set of people coming across from all all regions, all uh, localities. We can't stop them. So this is one industry which is going to be affected first with any news of pandemic coming in. So with the new uh, situation which we looked up to, we are looking up to around. People are saying, you know, this is education industry is the one which does not have the proper infrastructure or institutions cannot cater to uh, the need of controlling pandemic. So they are saying, you know, seventy percent of the students have felt that, you know they have some concern, health concern in schools. So obviously we, don't, we have, we will be uh, targeting a huge uh, crowd. We will not have so much of uh, uh, benefits to be given out like all other uh, set of sector of education. So that is the small concern when it comes to educating uh, children, uh, when educate, educating young adults. So 70% of parents are also have felt that, you know, they, they, will, uh, they will predominantly prefer online modem, modem of education than the physical mode of education here. So 42% of people, um, young adults have said, you know, they would want to have a remote uh, facility. So there is also a remote facility, which is now provided at uh, the higher extent in edu uh, beyond education also. We look up to software companies functional in the hybrid mode. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, businesses which are now floated in a remote ways. So now uh, the scenario of, if you look up to the placement scenario again, a uh, lot of companies, at least uh, from this uh, 23 batch, I have, I have witnessed 90% uh, of the companies which are actually uh, uh, selecting the student, the first level of selection is happening online. So the first level of selection, when they are looking up to giving out to the student, uh, we have certain certain concern. So students are saying, you know, when they say the 42% of the student who are saying that, you know, we want remote, we will not know the identity of who's attending, who's taking the test, uh, whether they're genuine, uh, they have, they have um, uh, the same set of cat, uh, students who have been shortlisted are taking the test or somebody else is on their behalf taking the test. 
So that has been the concern. But there are also certain set of softwares which have been devised, which are getting clever day by day, which gives you uh, the aspect of how a student is copying, on which area is copying, which line is copied. So plagiarism is uh, detected immediately and the report has been generated and said these set of students have copied, these set of uh, answers are similar. Uh, the software is taking a major role in the higher set uh, when it comes to the performance of the student in the area of uh, tests. So when the student is comfortably saying, a certain set of students comfortably are saying that, you know, we want remote, a certain set of higher number of students are saying that uh, it is uh, not fair, you know, where students are not being given proper chance on a physical, when they are taking a physical test versus a remote test, there are higher chances of copying higher chances of manipulation, malpractice, which are going on. Uh -huh. So uh, one third of the student um, has uh, stated that, you know, they lack the access to, to uh, teachers when they are doing an online uh, medium. Though we say uh, you know, that we, we are uh, able to help students in any angle. So students have felt that the online mo mode of access to teacher to ask questions, to clarify doubts are uh, not uh, applicable. So, uh, and we have our constant uh, internet issues, 50% have said the technology issues are really help, not helping them uh, in uh, uh, understanding uh, the day-to-day -day classes or how things are uh, looked up to. Um, this this uh, statement, um, the ninth statement, which uh, I'm mentioning here, is what is a culmination of companies which who have recruited our students and the feedback from student community and the feedback from education institution all be mixed. So companies have said this batch of students who are educated online, six out of 10 are not performing well in the industry. So the batch of students who have joined these companies in the last two years are not able to cope up to their extent of uh, work atmosphere which they had anticipated. Now it is in the who is to be blamed. So there are a lot of uh, blame game which is happening, saying you know that education industry is not giving them proper education, or the teachers have not taught them well, or it is a technology which is so there is a lot of uh, uh, turbulent situation which is created by this. But industries are somehow also looking up to how they can scale these set of students who recruited. So if you look up to the uh, stats and graph of 2022 recruitment, they've been around. 2.5 lakh engineers alone being recruited to all the IT firms. And all these 2.5 lakh engineers who come across India are being taught online. So the challenge with the industry is now, it is fine that they were able to answer questions. But the bigger challenge now they're facing is, is that the genuine candidate whom we uh, recruited online? Was he the, the real student who was given the interview? What is the performance which he's been uh, performing in the uh, college is not whatever we expected in the company. So this has been a huge uh, debate and now companies are also looking up to recruiting these freshers from campus physically. They don't want to conduct any online uh, medium of uh, uh, selection. So they say internship is very, very vital. Now companies are saying we will of let go of the student who will be recruited campus. They're saying, come here to uh, our facility, perform during internship physically, then we look up to your internship performance and convert you for full time. So the trust factor is lost uh, with the aspect of online education, whichever we've done. Um, so um, must be uh, the same scenario with most of us when we were in academics in the last two, three years, uh, we have literally given them a degree and send them out of our universities when we know that they have not even attended proper college for not more than nine to 10 months. So everything else was online for them. So we have somehow uh, tried our best to make them uh, um, employable, giving them a lot of hand holdings, but somewhere it is not given uh, the fair success rate, which uh, was expected. Now, what is this? Um, statistics which is given with us. So there are a lot of predominant factors which have been uh, told to us by the parents, the stakeholders, parents, company executives, faculties, uh, uh, the uh, tech education industry. So there are a lot of factors which they are contributing. But we still see that, you know, uh, companies are investing heavily. They are going full on on online medium of learning and uh, knowledge transfers. 
there is a lot of investments which are uh, going to be made. So one uh, data, another data point which I want to present to you, uh, the tech ed e-learning market is growing at a transformational speed. Though so they're predicting in, by 2025, the e-learning market will reach around 300 billion. So which is a huge industry to look up to. And we will also be contributing big time. So there'll be a lot of opportunities for our faculties uh, who can actually present uh, sitting here uh, and reach out to a diverse set of students across the globe. So now, now colleges or tech ed in the, uh, uh, com uh, companies are looking up to investing big time uh, on uh, institutions who can uh, set up a recording center, their recording labs. So wherein faculties can look up to come and teach online where the huge uh, mass audience can be from diverse uh, set of people across uh, the globe. So we have seen IITs which are offering their uh, uh, courses. We have seen uh, Coursera. Uh, so there are many multiple MOOC uh, programs which have been uh, offered. So whether it is going to stay or how we can utilize it. Few of our universities have really taken this as for, the, for our advantage. We have said, you know, a certain set of credits will be given for these courses, MOOC courses, uh, and we have identified certain syllabus and given an open off offer to students. We said four credits, you can take four credits by doing online course. If you do a certain set of credit, credit courses online, a certain subjects will be removed from your physical learning mode. So now students are more tend to take online courses, uh, empower them with uh, newer uh, technologies. Uh, NEP is actually given us a lot of leverage in uh, uh, identifying certain aspects of uh, study which was not taught in colleges. So these are all complementing. The online medium of education is complementing to uh, the NEP programs, uh, to uh, the credit systems at campus. And also when I listen to all the company executives who say, uh, uh, if, so there was a recent company which came to our campus a uh, fintech company, which openly said, Pradeep, I don't want students who are regular technically sound. I want students who have to be innovative, creative. So those days are gone. I am not hiring developers anymore. I don't want business that analyst anymore. There are, there are plenty available in open market. So those were the uh, top skills which companies used to come and recruit. Now they're saying there's abundance of uh, people uh, around us. So we will not come to specific campuses to recruit a uh, smaller skill set. We want somebody goes beyond books, beyond what the education system is offering. How can a student capitalize on these uh, online uh, offerings which are being uh, given by MOOCs is very, very important. Every student has to now certify himself or herself uh, in uh, any of the MOOC courses and demonstrate those certificates to the company. They are saying uh, how with one question they are going to ask you, ask the students, you know, what beyond books? What do you know beyond books? So how can you differentiate among your classmates. Your classmates have also studied the same thing. You also studied the same thing. Why should I recruit you? So these uh, opportunities are given to students so that they look up to using the data platforms, uh, using uh, the uh, MOOC courses, uh, certifying themselves beyond books. So now the ball is given uh, the core. Uh, it is landing in the students' uh, court. So they're saying, you know, okay, you have a basic degree. You have certain set of nomenclatures which have been followed, it is fine. But what beyond it? Why, what is the differentiating factor which you can bring in? With so much of uh, digital content available, what is that you have utilized? How are you capitalizing the digital content? Let it be technical courses, let it be non-technical courses. So there are certain uh, data points which I will also uh, tell you in my uh, next slide. So artificial intelligence is taking uh, the front seat. So AI uh, is looking up to using, see by 2022, uh, this was an old data which has been given. They said by 2022, use of AI in education is expected to grow by 48% and we are already there. We are in 63% growth. Um, so AI in education, how AI is transforming our uh, lives in uh, tech -ed industries, how education sector, so is what uh, we look up to. So 93% of the educators think productive analysis will change education. So now with NEP is also been uh, parallelly helping uh, with uh, our uh, education system. So when I talk about uh, the aspect of learning, so it is not confined only to an engineering division or a technology division. So here we see 85% uh, of uh, 
the courses which are looked up to are on critical thinking and problem solving. These are the courses which the people have taken and helped them. How the certification plan is been helping these students? How what are the courses which they looked up to? So certain aspect of courses which we look up to time management. Eighty four percent of uh, courses have helped in time management, attention to details, seventy five percent in writing skills. So these are all the online medium of education which has transformed our uh, students' life or the employees who are looking up to. It. So more than 40% plan to return to their alma mater to take more classes. Um, then now they're saying, you know, we want to go back and also offer a blended way of learning. So with all these scenario scenarios around, when we know how online is the new medium, and uh, there's also threatening news which is coming around and saying that, you know, down the lane, we will not need big classrooms. The, uh, we will not need uh, big infrastructure as a college, as an entity, but we need just trained faculties who can present themselves, who can reach out to the students at the mass level. So the medium of digitalization, the way uh, education is getting transformed uh, is also uh, at a very fast rate. Uh, we can also be some somewhere uh, uh, happy and contented when we say that you know the personal uh, effect, uh, the way we can demonstrate teaching uh, in a physical presence and the satisfaction what we have in the physical presence is very very vital. The aspect of emotion, the aspect of uh, body language, everything is very very important, vital. But we also see somewhere the uh, digital transformation which is happening, and we also have to get adapted to digital transformation. We can't say that. We will stop uh, uh, online courses. We will only uh, go uh, uh, believe in uh, the physical uh, uh, classes. Uh, we have to be adaptable for both of it now. We can't just say that, you know, how things are uh, predominantly looking up to. We have to be tech savvy. Faculties have to know how to uh, be present digitally, how we can use the softwares, how we can use our effective medium of communication online and how we can still demonstrate and do justice to students uh, in the learning atmosphere. So these are the new ways in which we have to put in our effort towards. Um, I totally agree uh, when people come and say that, you know, we could not uh, have the same uh, level of interaction online. We could not uh, have the same physical presence. Uh, now, at least I'm fortunate to see you all. You're all uh, uh, been, uh, 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 though you are active in the videos, uh, but when we have seen how the regular classes were conducted, so it was just like, you know, everybody were um, uh, in their uh, homes, they were not switching on their videos. We don't know whether we are teaching to the right set of students or we just looking at the camera and uh, talking continuously. Uh, the challenges were many. The aspect of uh, exchange was very less. So it was only one way of communication. The other way of communication was not there. We did not know. But things are, again, there are a lot of uh, tools which have been developed. Uh, there's a certain set of uh, uh, statistics again, which these the, the statistics have been given uh, from the companies which uh, are now investing hugely in their uh, digital organizations. So beyond the classrooms, what we teach, companies are also having their uh, NID centers where they are also investing huge money uh, on uh, educating their employees who are actually setting up to the trend. So learning, as we all know, learning is not going to stop. Learning has to be continuous. So our students, when they are going beyond uh, college to work at these uh, companies, companies are also saying, you have to get yourself certified. Every year, minimum one to two certifications the student has to have. So he can't say that, you know, I have got my degree, I have got my master degree, uh, this is over, this is end, I will not study. So they have to keep themselves upgraded. If they don't get upgraded, uh, they will not have uh, their appraisals on time. There's a lot of uh, times when students are coming back and saying, uh, no, I lost my job. I Though I had five years of experience, I had 10 years of experience, I, I lost my job. Why they're losing the job? Because with five and 10 years of experience, they're actually sitting at a manager level. When they're sitting at a manager level, the quotient of learning is less. The quotient of human... Uh, uh, human relations is more. They will actually have a huge team um, working under them. So they will, the aspect of team management, human resource management is more in the managerial level than the learnability question. 
So now companies are saying, we don't want managers who can do human resource work. We don't want people who can manage teams. We want somebody to also contribute technically, to contribute towards uh, the company development. And you can't say that we are going to stop learning. So certification, online certifications is huge. So very recently, Coursera has uh, said, you know, they are tying up with organizations, institutes, and offering a lot of discounts. And they're saying we are going to offer any number of courses uh, for the organization. The candidate has to get themselves certified with uh, the online medium. So no intervention of any faculty here. It is just uh, with their uh, understanding, the videos, lecture videos, all these things are what is now driving even inside the companies. Uh, so online programs are now getting little easier, accessible, and uh, it is also getting accepted. More importantly, some of the companies are saying, yes, if your degree is in this uh, university and if it is online as well, we are accepting it. So the aspect of physical degree, whether with four years of three years or four years of continuous education is slowly somewhere losing its prominence. So the online universities are also getting more serious in utilizing the space of building, bridging the gap between knowledge transfer towards interaction of students, towards genuinity of their degree. So the aspect of competition is now between the physical universities and the online universities. So how can we justify and bridge the gap and how we can look up to utilizing this space uh, and uh, pro, uh, pro, you know, promoting ourselves as teachers for globe then teachers for the university is now getting more and more complex. So if you look up to a small statistics here, uh, top reasons students are choosing online program because 60% of undergraduates have said 60% uh, have chosen it as uh, undergraduate programs. Um, 46% of uh, students have taken graduate programs. So 39% of graduates and undergraduate students are saying it is reputable. They are reaching up to foreign universities which do not have much of access. Uh, the faculties, quality of faculty, 20% of the undergraduate students have said it is uh, advantages. 34% of the graduate students have, have started giving more vocal feedback about it. So this is one aspect which I want to bring in for businesses. Every $1 spent on e-learning increases the productivity by $30. So look, looking up to how companies are looking, are, are transforming themselves with the online education. Uh, so for students, e-learners, 5x more material per hour for training. So they are accessible <laughs> the lot of important information online beyond uh, the classroom hours. So in a course of say three years, a student who is getting uh, 160 to 170 credits are now getting exposed to adding multiple credits, multiple subjects to their kitty and uh, learning more skills, learning more newer subjects, which are predominantly dominating in industries are the new normal now. So 160 credits and it's saying, you know, competing with a global uh, set of students who will be joining them as colleagues are getting stressed, are getting little difficult. So projecting themselves in the next economy, in the next few years, will be very, very difficult, will be, will be very, very challenging. So they have to go blended with the online mode and as well as the physical mode. So the hybrid mode of learning is there to stay. Students have to choose. So we just have to guide them on saying which are the subjects they can choose in the online medium of education, which are the subjects they can uh, use in uh, capitalizing for their benefit. Um, now there are several uh, companies uh, which are saying that you know they don't want uh, specified technical uh, engineers. They want somebody who has the drive to become managers. So they are looking up to recruiting managers from colleges, then just graduates. So when they say about these terminologies to transform them as managers, we as educational institutions cannot produce the ready-made manager or ready-made engineer to the company. So there has to be a drive. There has to be a passion from the student fraternity also to be ready, industry ready from the aspect of what is the learning which they can bring in. So we have started introducing several uh, online mode of uh, teaching of management subjects in our engineering curriculum. We have said this set of 20% of the syllabus will be uh, given to you 
in the online mode, another 80% of the technology service will be given to you in the physical mode. But this attracts credit. Both of them are attracting credits. They can't give away and say that I will complete my 80% but not carry 20% uh, of it. So the equal importance is getting advanced. So the percentage of online learning is getting advanced. The aspect of what subjects which we have to offer is the new normal which we have to give uh, to the students at diversity level. Um, certain challenges uh, which uh, we are uh, looking up to uh, in the online medium, as you know, 18% of the school children do not have internet access. 45% of low income Americans do not own a computer. So um, more than 30 million school children rely on free or reduced cost lunch provided in schools. So we have a lot of other challenges. Students don't come only uh, for education in certain aspects of rural villages. They deploy more on the uniforms, the freebies, the food which we are giving. Now, there are a lot of other external parameters which are uh, to be considered while uh, uh, we are uh, working with these students in an online mode. The time devices which are highly reliable. So we have seen uh, during pandemic, there was a huge uh, uh, escalation in the prices of laptops, tablets, mobile phones. So students started demanding it to the parents. So what happens if a non uh, middle age, uh, you know, middle income level uh, parent who cannot afford a laptop for a student, they could at least uh, give a certain set of devices which is friendly towards the online education, how things can revolve around. But there is also a challenge. Now, doctors are another set of uh, study where doctors come and say that, you know, uh, the concentration level of uh, students is deteriorating. The uh, extent of learnability, the extent of uh, well, uh, quotient of uh, concentration is dropping. Uh, there are a lot of other mental disorders which have been now looked up to uh, when uh, children are exposed towards online learning. So there is always some pros and cons which have been developed. But there are certain aspect of uh, growth which are also being devised. Because when we know there are certain problems, there is also certain devices which have been uh, formed. You know, our technology is advancing. So the, I, I want to demonstrate a small video uh, in here uh, about our AI, which is actually uh, looking up to teaching uh, students. I just play this video. So this is one company which is actually uh, once uh, has developed an AI assistant platform, which is actually helping our uh, uh, students on uh, understanding better, or uh, they are actually looking up to how uh, students can be uh, educated well with an online exchange program. There can be mutual understanding from both the student and the faculties. So just tell me if you can hear this and see the video. Is the, is the video visible? No, sir, only audio. No, no sir, sir, only audio. Okay. Is it visible now? I am sure. Slide is visible. As I'm walking through the lesson with you, I'm going to be watching. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watching the front. My eyes are looking. I'm going to be watching the posture, watching facial expressions. We give off signals verbally and non verbally that are indicated of our We don't have any emotion to address when it's like. What a her is doing it. Is it visible now? Is visible but in pause mode. Okay, I'll just text you um, the link so you can actually watch this video. It's an interesting video. I'll just tell you what the video is all about. Okay, so this is the company which is actually uh, 
working uh, a ahuri.com so what this company is developed the software product which they have developed is the ai just needs a camera and a microphone so with the camera and a microphone the device is been so well trained to analyze the facial expression of a student the eyeball movement retina movement of a student and they are predicting whether the student is uh, in the mode of understanding what the faculty is presenting the area of doubt where the student is being generated towards the aspect of learnability the percentage of learnability is also been presented to the faculty and said this set of students have understood this set of study which has been predominant so ai is now understanding from just the facial expression on whether the student is demonstrating the learnability question easy concentrating on the subject matter what is the aspect of uh, what is the percentage of information which a student has captured so lot of things are looking up to it. when the generative ai is giving us so much of information the online digital medium of teaching is getting easier so we at this junction the company uh, the company ai software also says this is the point where you have to pause and give more examples this is the point where students are the data analytics which have been presented are so useful deviceful uh, the faculty is now able to experience real time uh, teaching experience or a digital platform so this is just a start um, of how ai is going to uh, help us in our online transformation but till then uh, the way which we have to uh, communicate with the way in which we have to share our knowledge the process of transfer is also very uh, intense in uh, talking to students and making them understanding so till we rely uh, uh, too much on uh, the aspect of uh, learnability till we rely uh, too much on uh, the ai softwares uh, the ai softwares till now uh, are not uh, easily accessible or uh, uh, it is not uh, for uh, all the education sector where we can use and uh, 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 give away uh, lectures but somewhere we are there we are looking up to utilizing the space of ai so it is going to complement the use of uh, uh, our uh, knowledge towards making the student understand uh, so eyeball movement the capture of retinal images the capture of the simplest and the smallest of uh, movement of facial expression is telling us devising that the student is not confident so this has been implemented already in the testing platforms so when we look up to these companies which are uh, doing uh, our uh, uh, pre placement tests uh, on campus uh, the companies are confidently saying let the student take the test anywhere across uh, across uh, the sister college they need not be present in front of some uh, uh, proctored environment they can go sit at their homes uh, and take the test when confidently they are saying and we know there are high chances of student manipulating we know there are there are going to be a uh, chance where the student can also impersonate he will not be he or she will not uh, be genuine in uh, taking the test somebody else will be helping behind the screen somebody uh, uh, will be actually giving them answers so there are lot of ways uh, which a student can manipulate the test system when we know that there are so much of challenges companies have uh, started relying on these ai softwares which actually generates data of whether the student has given this his or real, his or her uh, real knowledge have they solved the problem using their intelligence or somebody else's intelligence so plagiarism is looked up to big time whether they opened another tab whether the system is capturing uh, some information from the next source they are also looking up to tracking ip addresses where you now this specific ip address will be mapped to a person who is sitting next to the uh, them or somebody is uh, giving data from that ip address so that is also giving so every 3 seconds the camera is capturing uh, the eyeball movement uh, of a student whether uh, he is glued up to uh, the screen whether he is looking somewhere else whether he has a device which is uh, helping him a phone the instrument can be kept and uh, looked up to so a smallest of the image in every 3 seconds is capturing and saying this uh, candidate is cheating at this junction 
this is a questionable remark where uh, we will not be able to test this candidate on. So the parameters of checking, the parameters of uh, use uh, the in uh, a ca digital camera is more now. AI is uh, getting uh, sound sensitive. If somebody is uh, helping him behind or murmuring the answer, uh, AI is going to tell you know, there is somebody who is giving the information. So they will mark the test. So the success rate of this AI platforms in the smallest of test environment is as simple as 90%. So they have already reached 90% of success rate in the test platform. And trust me, now we are going to use a lot of other devices, other uh, softwares to help our uh, students in the learning aspect also. So till we have the entire infrastructure, AI-driven infrastructure uh, supporting us, uh, we all know we've been using a lot of uh, other modes of uh, engaging students. So just by talking to students over a continuous uh, period, you know, it is not helping them. So their the attention span is very min uh, minimal. So we have high chances of them you know, using uh, other uh, uh, medium of uh, you know, social media. So when we know all these things, the way in which we are communicating, the way in which we, we should be using the softwares are also now getting dynamic. We should know certain uh, free uh, freebie softwares which we can use uh, to engage the audience. So mm -hmm. if you see uh, uh, a picture uh, of uh, an online education, the faculty uh, has uh, said uh, uh, to come with uh, attractive uh, costumes, uh, just like a fancy dress and said, uh, if you come with attractive costumes, uh, they it is just to see that all uh, all of the students come on camera. It is just to make them attentive to come on camera, switch on the camera so that they know what the other person is dressed up to. So in, in this angle, they are getting creative and saying, you can use any of the background image, use the background image, which is uh, of your choice. So if they are talking about things beyond book, if they are talking about something very social, students are getting entertained uh, to use this medium of creativity. And the main aspect which they are looking up to is to see whether all these students can come online on video. If they come online over video, we can really understand whether the candidate is understanding something or are they glued towards how we can scale them up to the next level of understanding. So all these things. So less lecture hours and more of examples, more of statistics, more of data-driven uh, teaching is what the online medium will affect rather than continuous slides, continuity of words and texts. So um, more interactive PPTs. So these are all very simple, which we've been using. Um, one uh, aspect of uh, online medium, which we, which is worked well, uh, I'm sorry, I had certain um, videos to display, but uh, the software is not allowing me to demonstrate that video. The implementing of videos, implementing of certain uh, clips uh, during presentations is breaking uh, the monotony. So instead of uh, just uh, telling them what they are going to learn, we have to surprise them. So if you are surprising them, they're getting back to the screen how they can uh, concentrate on what we are talking. So a certain aspect of video education, which we'll be implementing uh, in our regular uh, uh, teaching modes. So these are all certain aspects which we are using in our online medium, which is uh, helping us uh, get the attention span of the students in the regular course of uh, uh, regular course of teaching. Uh, certain other, again, uh, statistics, uh, the attention span is going lower. The uh, teacher uh, to hold them glued towards what we are expressing. So we have, we have seen uh, the attention span even in the classrooms uh, are getting deteriorated. Uh, so the attention span of humans in 2013, which was eight seconds, uh, is now going up to 12 seconds in uh, in the online medium uh, of education. So the certain aspects of uh, 15 to 20 minutes of uh, lecture sessions towards uh, the aspect of learning from online is different. So in lecture sessions, we can have control on student, uh, whether he is getting distracted, we can bring them back. But in online, it is getting challenges, challenged. 
So the barriers for uh, our online uh, education system, as we know, uh, text messages. So there's been a survey which says 28% of the students are using uh, any of these three uh, medium of uh, uh, made way to get uh, distracted. So a lot of them, you know, 28% of them are sending text message. 27% uh, of them are checking mails. 17% of them are sleeping. So this is the data which uh, is being recently surveyed by a student. So they have, though they are physically present, though their uh, names are popping up in online medium, but the aspect of learning is captured in this way. Uh, there are certain softwares now which are also telling us uh, statistical, statistical point where in which time zone the student is getting lost. What is the time angle in which? So thankfully, uh, today when we are looking up to use of technology, the access of learning, we can still hold classes, the evening sessions. So companies can actually give uh, learning sessions for their employees uh, after class hours, after uh, the working hours. So the medium of uh, use of this online uh, coaching is helping us uh, in uh, the remote mode as well. Uh, this is again a certain aspect of uh, data which uh, uh, they are talking about, which I can uh, share it to you later. Uh, uh, another important uh, when we are talking about pres making presentations, so not more moving the slide, not more than uh, one slide every two minutes, not more than four bullet points per slide, not more than eight words per bullet. So this is the ground rule of presentations online when we are making it. So when we are presenting, so every movement, every side slide should be surprised. And if I have all the text in a slide, there is no point in me explaining anything to the student. So the student should not get any data from the text, but it should just be the reference point for me to talk to them on the aspect of learning. So using a lot of pictures have given the insight of getting glued towards uh, the screen for a longer time. So two, four, eight rule, not more than one slide every two minutes, not more than four bullet points, not more than eight words per bullet is a rule for uh, the slides and which we are already, which is already uh, the basic uh, necessity in presentation skills. We've already gone through it. Not uh, very, very important. Uh, I want to talk about, um, okay, if I have time, I want to talk to you about one special software, which is uh, really uh, helping uh, us learn and um, utilizing this. So Mentimeter.com, this is a software which we can use it in our regular learning uh, aspect and uh, teaching aspect. Um, so I'll, I can demonstrate this software, which is very user friendly. So we can run questions, we can run quizzes, we can even use presentations and videos using this platform. We just have to, it is a freeware, we just have to register for it, Mentimeter.com and run certain quizzes. Uh, there are many softwares uh, like this, uh, which are uh, supplementing our uh, online uh, education, but by far this has been uh, the most user-friendly software which I have seen. So just tell me if I can share my screen and let's go and do some work here on Mentimeter. Okay, uh, so can we see the screen, Mentimeter? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. So this is how the screen looks. This is actually uh, the host screen. Um, so if you look up to the host screen, how we can uh, do it. Uh, we can do a lot of work here. We can actually uh, devise it for a quiz, a presentation, or we can use it for a new survey. So I'll just... Uh, show you an example of how we can, I'll create a quiz. And all I have to do is just to give you uh, a blank quiz. So they're already given some templates.
So new slide, I will go multiple choice. So this, you can, you can just ask the students to log into menti, menti.com. Uh, you can try in fact menti.com. And give this number to them. So four six eight zero four two four four, or you can use this number. What is displayed? This is the host screen. Ask your question. More of education online offline. Or it was just a question for them. Hybrid. So you can, uh, one of you can try uh, just menti.com. M E N T I menti.com. So people have already started responding by just this. Uh, so we'll know how many people have responded by this number. If you just give this number, students can access and start responding. So this is actually devising and helping a student to break the monotony of learning. Uh, they can uh, involve themselves in uh, the aspect of giving quizzes, or uh, you can also give them uh, some aspect of presentations. They can create and share presentations here. So this has been a user-friendly uh, platform. So you can have multiple questions, multiple uh, presentations, which you can add up to. Uh, this is a very attractive uh, online uh, Tool, uh, which is actually helpful in online education. So when we have a lot of this data to be used, so you can quiz the class. You will also know how many people are attending, how many people are not attending, when there are 50 of them which who are expected to be in the call. So how many responses they are giving? What are the aspects which uh, is given to them? So we can devise up to uh, 20 questions in a single uh, survey. So we can have multiple questions. So it can also be open-ended questions, need not be a quiz kind of a thing. So we can also have an interactive session where they can uh, communicate with us. So this platform is by far uh, very helpful uh, in uh, demonstrating, uh, which uh, we can uh, look up to utilizing it. I'll show you another platform here. Okay, so Microsoft Microsoft Teams is uh, is a common used uh, platform which is also safe and secure of the data which we look up to. So we have these softwares, many of these software, Quiz, TechEasy, Jamboard, all these softwares are uh, helping us in uh, uh, the presentation aspect of it. We can uh, look up to utilizing uh, these uh, softwares for uh, the online medium of it. So the so advantage are these free? These are all free, all are free uh, software. So you just have to uh, log into them using your uh, email credentials. But there are advanced features. I don't think so. The advanced features are uh, needed, but Microsoft Teams are uh, by far free for us with a lot of softwares. Um, if you want to add more questions, say like around 50, 60 questions, you have to go for the paid version, but till 20 questions we can uh, utilize in all these uh, softwares. So many of the corporates now are uh, using uh, Microsoft Teams where because of the uh, credentials from the company, the safety aspect which we they bring in. But uh, for us, you know, uh, we have a lot of these learning uh, 
resources which are given uh, free of cost so we can use them uh, at our um, teaching materials so creating we can also create presentations we did not work uh, uh, other than the presentations ppts we can create ppts here we have a lot of supporting uh, ppts already uh, uh, which are uh, published so we can use them uh, these these are some of the softwares uh, which gives a vibrant uh, way of uh, uh, presenting data, the vibrant way of uh, looking up to the attention span of uh, students, asking questions or uh, exchange of uh, ideas. Uh, we can even uh, make a storyboard and say that you know multiple uh, teams can be created and uh, th these teams can present here. So multiple team presentations can happen parallelly. So all the all the softwares are uh, integrally. Uh, uh, having a lot of these options, um, we Excuse just me, have sir. To explore. Sir, yeah. uh, do we have any uh, online uh, tools meant for uh, recording the attendance of students at the time of the happening of the online class? Definitely, we have it in uh, as uh, in Google also. Uh, Google Meet. No, other, okay, other than the Google Forms, which which can be like uh, uh, say entered any time during the day, but if we want to uh, say capture the live attendance of the students who are online. Correct. So in Google Meet, if you are using the Google Meet software, if it is accessed by college account, we can track uh, attendance. So it uh, gives uh, a real time tracker of how many attended and what is the time they logged in, what is the time they logged off. But so for that, we require college domain based emails, no, sir. College domain based emails. But are... we as government colleges usually will not have such facilities. So that, that is actually a challenge uh, in the software. We, we should give institution email IDs because there is a lot of credentials involved. Uh, so even teams can actually uh, capture the data. If you have a Teams account, you can create a Teams account for free. So there, uh, the use of uh, college account is not needed. You can create a Teams account and capture the data. Okay, sir. So there are many of these softwares, you know, um, uh, Google Classroom is very dynamic. So hey, anybody can create a Google Classroom and use it. So, but not many features are there in Google Classroom. Uh, so I think Google Classroom is by far easily accessible for anybody uh, and also has similar features uh, in, incorporated. But uh, there are there are certain aspects which are not present in Google because it is a freeware. But uh, uh, there are these softwares which you can look up to using it. And many of these softwares are free and uh, easily accessible. So uh, you can try it out. So um, let me just move on. Uh, and uh, before we uh, can conclude, you know, we see there is a lot of uh, these MOOC courses, a lot of these TechEd uh, portals which are uh, offering course for us. Uh, we should uh, really capitalize and ask our students uh, to be present. Uh, they, they also have certain rebates for students and uh, if we can uh, look up to uh, buying a whole deal, uh, Coursera, a certain aspect, they came to universities and said, uh, we want to offer this any number of courses for six months for free. Uh, similarly, uh, certain uh, uh, TechEd uh, platforms are uh, utilizing it, giving it for free. We should utilize it and promote more uh, online uh, courses for students. It is actually helpful for us. And for us, uh, as we know, you know, we also have to get TechEd tech-friendly uh, we also should know how uh, we can uh, communicate and exchange our uh, knowledge uh, with these students. Uh, by far, uh, uh, there are a lot of freewares which are user-friendly, uh, which we can demonstrate by uh, uh, using the free packages which are offering. Um, so this is uh, what I had to present and uh, uh, it is uh, my uh, good opportunity uh, to interact with uh, the learned, learned audience. Uh, if you have uh, any clarifications, questions, exchange of thought, uh, please feel free to ask me here. Uh, you can also connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is the future of 
uh, communication, LinkedIn is where we look up to a lot of business transactions happening, recommendations happening. Uh, so we can uh, uh, recommend each other, appreciate each other, share knowledge. So LinkedIn also has a learning division in their uh, platform now. Uh, LinkedIn uh, learning and teaching uh, is the next generation uh, certificate which every companies are asking. Uh, so please promote uh, your children, your uh, uh, students uh, to get online, to cert get certified, while also let us see how we can develop this community, uh, be productive enough in the online mode as well. Uh, open for discussion, please. I will text you my LinkedIn account so you can connect with me. So you can just find me in LinkedIn, uh, Pradeep Manjanath from SJC. So I'll be more than happy uh, to connect with you, exchange thoughts, share our experience when it comes to student fraternity. Uh, thank you. So uh, if you don't have uh, anything to discuss, so we can uh, meet you in the next session. Thank you. I, I see a lot of uh, appreciative messages. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. So humbled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think teaching is not a good uh, uh, this one platform for uh, online teaching, sir. Thank you, sir. So nice. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Humbled. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. In case if we have any queries, uh, again in the next session after the completion of both the sessions, we can have a Q and A. Definitely, definitely, buddy. I'm always available. Thank you. Thank you.